All right, everyone, uh, we'll get started here. Uh, so good afternoon or good morning, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us for this presentation on how to get involved in the 2021 federal election. I'd uh, just like to first acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from the traditional lands of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. Uh, my name is Lucas Vega. I'm the government relations lead at CNA. Uh, and I'm very excited to be speaking to you today. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, please insert them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we'll have some time at the end of the webinar uh, to answer any questions. Uh, so next slide, please, Elizabeth. Uh, so today, this is the agenda uh, I'll go over with, uh, with you. Uh, we'll talk today about some general, general information on the election, and I'll provide some uh, quick background on it. I'll talk about CNA's government relations work and election priorities. We will also discuss how and why uh, your voice, the nursing voice matters in this election. I'll go over CNA's website and toolkit and share some ways you can get involved. And finally, uh, at the end, as I said, we'll have some times, uh, time for questions. Uh, next slide, please, Elizabeth. So as you know, we're in the middle of a federal election and Canadians are set to go to the polls on September 20th, uh, just a few weeks from now. You may just be wondering why we find ourselves in an election now. Um, the Canadian system does provide for a fixed election date every four years. Uh, so the next fixed election date is in 2023. Uh, however, historically minority governments, uh, which is the one we had just before the election got called, uh, don't tend to last more than two years. And, uh, and a, a early election call can be called if uh, the opposition defeats the government in the House of Commons, or if the prime minister asks the governor general for an election, which is what happened uh, just two weeks ago. Next slide, please. So who are the party leaders in this election? Um, it's not too different from last time around in 2019. Uh, you have uh, Mr. Justin Trudeau, who's the prime minister and also leader of the Liberal Party of Canada. Over to his right, Aaron O'Toole, leader of the Conservative Party. The NDP uh, the leader is Mr. Jagmi Singh. Uh, Monsieur Blanchet is the chef de bloc de Québécois. And lastly, but not least, uh, Miss Annamie Paul, who's the leader of the Green Party. Uh, next slide, please, Elizabeth. So, um, there's still a lot of campaigning left in this election, uh, about two or three weeks from now. So parties can make gains or recover lost space in the weeks to come. Uh, but this is how polls, uh, recent polling is translating uh, the mood of Canadians at this time. Uh, the Liberals are obviously expecting to win a majority this time around. Uh, to, so to upgrade their government from a minority to a, to a majority. Uh, but they need more seats to win. Uh, so it's going to be in very interesting to see uh, what happens the next couple of weeks of the election campaign. Next slide, please. So because of the election, voting is going to look a little bit different this time around. Um, so I just wanted to go uh, quickly over uh, how you can vote in this election. So basically, you have four ways of casting your ballot, and you can choose the one you prefer, really. You just need to be mindful as uh, there are certain deadlines and requirements depending on the method you choose. Uh, so basically you can vote on election day, obviously, and that's September 20th. You can vote on advanced polling days and they'll open on September 10th to September 13th. And you can also vote by mail, which is becoming a very popular option in this uh, election. Elections Canada who runs the election, they're predicting uh, millions of ballots being sent by mail. Uh, just a quick note on that, you'll need, uh, there's a deadline to apply to vote by mail and that's September 14th. Uh, so don't forget that if you choose that option. And as in every election, you can also vote on, within the Elections Canada office, uh, but you can only do that uh, until September 14th. So there's also a deadline there. Uh, next slide, please, Elizabeth. Um, we strongly recommend you to go to Elections Canada, uh, their website. Uh, over there, you'll find all the information you need on, depending on the method of vote you choose. And uh, as I said, there are deadlines and, and some requirements as well, but uh, you can find all the information there. 
Uh, next slide. So now let's move over to TNA's advocacy activities and our election platform. Uh, next slide. So one of CNA's main objectives is to effectively lobby and advocate on behalf of nursing and nurses across Canada. Um, our mission being to strengthen nursing as a profession and Canada's not-for-profit public health system. So this means participating directly and indirectly, and I'll explain that a little bit in the next slide, uh, participating in the political and public policy process by developing relationships, strategies, and bringing the nursing voice uh, and expertise to decision makers and legislators. To do this, uh, CNA adopts a very strict nonpartisan position. So that means we don't endorse uh, any particular party or candidate. We engage with all parties, all governments, all senators and members of parliament to move the needle on CNA's priorities. Our focus really is to build positive relationships with decision makers and by adopting a nonpartisan position, um, this approach helps CNA to build consensus on our priorities and advance the profession in the long term. Because um, as everyone knows, we never know who the government of the day is going to be. So we need to have constructive and uh, positive relationship with everyone. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, CNA has all sorts of different advocacy and lobby activities, and these are just, you know, overall some of the activities we, we do at CNA. We meet regularly with decision makers and their staff, so senators, ministers, MPs, uh, uh, bureaucrats, public servants. We're also constantly participating and providing written submissions to government, so government consultations, and appearing before parliamentary committee as a witness or also submitting a written brief. Uh, parliamentary committees conduct all sorts of different studies uh, on the health field um, as, and in every other field as well. Uh, but we participate on, 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 our, on the health file, of course. Um, we, we work to build strong support and consensus with other organizations such as the Canadian Medical Association as just as an example. We interact with the media and the general public. And, and what I mentioned about indirect advocacy activity is we seek to get nurses engaged at the local level. And we find this is one of the most effective ways of um, advancing our policy priorities and issues. Uh, next slide, please, Elizabeth. I'm just keeping an eye here on the chat box and I'll just see if there's any comments or questions, but we're good for now. Um, so at CNA, we've been really, we're working really hard to advance the nursing profession and the priority of nurses. And uh, throughout the last year, and of course, this is a culmination of the many, many, many decades uh, that CNA um, lobbies on behalf of nurses. But most recently, um, our efforts have been extensively recognized by media outlets, uh, such as the Hill Times and the Lobby Monitor in Ottawa. Uh, we have placed CNA among the top lobbyists at the federal level. And the, earlier this year, we were named among the top 100 lobbyists by the Hill Times. We, we were featured in an article in March about our uh, advocacy efforts in this February uh, involving the federal government's budget. And last week or so, we were named um, among the top 40 uh, lobbying organizations overall uh, by the Lobby Monitor and among the top five healthcare or health uh, uh, organizations. Uh, next slide, please. So now I'll do, I'll do a quick overview of CNA's election platform and the issues we are asking nurses and the ge general public uh, to engage on uh, during this election. And just to explain how we arrived on these uh, pillars, which I'll explain, um, every election CNA looks at the current political issues, the current political scenario, our own portfolio of work, surveys with nurses, polling with Canadians, uh, the mood of you know, the, the public opinion. Uh, and also we look at doing consultations with key informants um, to come up with a short list of issues that are later approved by CNA's executive. So next slide, please. So these are, the issues uh, CNA is advocating on uh, during this federal election. And this really came 
you know, from a rationale of uh, addressing the many challenges that COVID-19 has further exacerbated in Canada and also to strengthen the, the Canada's health system. So we, we arrived at these four priority areas, supporting health workers, expanding virtual care, providing better care for older adults, and fighting racism and discrimination. And CNA, CNA is urging all political parties and candidates to make these issues a priority during, during the election uh, so that the next government can work to take immediate action on these issues. So I'll go over uh, the highlights uh, for each of these, um, but you can find more information on our website, on our election platform. It has all the details and background information on uh, each of these pillars. And I'll show you where you can find our election platform. Uh, next slide, please. So the first pillar, supporting health workers. And um, I don't need to tell anyone here, I think that the pandemic has taken a very significant toll um, on, on the mental health uh, of nurses and other health professionals. Uh, I see that I need to be, speak a little bit louder, so I will try to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me know if this is better, or if uh, I still need to speak a bit louder. Um, so we, we know that nurses are showing the highest rates of anxiety and depression of, among health workers. And the pandemic has exacerbated staffing shortages, as we know, which have led to excessive workloads across Canada. And these are in part a result of inadequate planning due to inadequate workforce data. Uh, to, so to address these challenges, the CNA, has, CNA is calling in its election platform um, for tailored mental health supports for healthcare workers and a national human resources strategy involving creating an agency, a federal agency uh, that would address data gaps and data infrastructure needs of uh, Canada's health workforce. Okay, I guess the, the audio is, is good now. So thank you for that. Uh, next slide, please, Elizabeth. Uh, so the second pillar is expanding virtual care. And we, at CNA, we, we like to say that virtual care has been the silver lining of the pandemic. Suddenly, you know, after uh, COVID-19 being declared a, a global pandemic back in March of last year, we, we saw uh, how quickly uh, many people in Canada started to get easier access to care. Uh, and this, especially for, you know, vulnerable groups or those living in remote or rural communities because of that sudden expansion of virtual care. But um, we know that many barriers still exist. And um, CNA is urging federal leaders to continue to scale up uh, virtual care in Canada. And uh, we've seen how Canadians and, and, and patients uh, in general, people living in Canada uh, have shown an interest in virtual care. So according to uh, a poll that was done by the Medical Association, they found that 91% of patients who use virtual care last year were satisfied with it. And CNA's own, own polling shows that, showed us that 75% uh, of um, people living in Canada want both virtual and in-person uh, care uh, once the pandemic is over. So, CNA's, uh, so CNA has three recommendations on expanding virtual care, uh, a national digital strategy, which doesn't really exist today in Canada at the federal level, uh, more technology solutions and training for health uh, workers and, and training and resources uh, and increasing access to high speed internet because of the current internet divide uh, between urban and rural uh, regions. Uh, so next slide, please. The third pillar is uh, around older adults and reimagining aging. Um, also, don't, I don't think I really need to explain uh, to those here that uh, COVID-19 has really exacerbated uh, many long-standing and widespread healthcare system gaps for older adults, especially those uh, living in long-term care homes. Uh, we saw the tragic outcomes uh, in this sector, especially last year with the first wave, uh, but also this year as well. Um, and this with the fact that we all know that Canada's population is aging. And that really represents one of the strongest economic drives today. Um, Canadians in a couple of decades from now, uh, age 65 plus, uh, will represent 25% of the population up from 18% uh, in 2020. So it is a significant 
shift, which will have a very significant impact in demand and patients seeking home care, long-term care, and, uh, and it, this will all drive a significant amounts of uh, healthcare costs over the next decades. Um, so to address these issues, uh, CNA is recommending uh, a redesign of long-term care by creating pan-Canadian standards tied to new federal funding for the sector, and also uh, a new federal health transfer that would account for Canada's aging population. Next slide, please. And last but not least, uh, our fourth pillar is around fighting racism and discrimination. Um, we're really urging federal leaders to prioritize this uh, during the, uh, this federal election and of course uh, for the next government. And uh, we all know here uh, how much racism in, is an important determinant of health and, uh, and also that Canada's health workforce uh, needs more diversity and that the health system uh, be free of discrimination. So CNA's recommendation is focusing on a safe drinking water for indigenous communities and increasing the health workforce's uh, education and cultural competence, and also augmenting, uh, increasing the recruitment of black, indigenous, and people of color into healthcare. Next slide, please. So now, so now let's talk about uh, your voice. And in any federal election, your voice matters. Uh, so let's talk about how, why it, it's, it is important and how you can get involved. Uh, next slide, please, Elizabeth. So I really like this image because it really illustrates well for me uh, what a lot of people think. Uh, many people that I talk to think that their voice uh, is just one more and it won't really make a difference uh, if they choose to get involved or not, but it, it really does make a difference and, and it's very easy to participate. Um, nurses in Canada are many and uh, they can be an influential voice if uh, we all speak together in a very cohesive way. Uh, next slide, please. So um, nurses have a very important role to play in political advocacy and, and they can influence significantly uh, a policymaker's decisions. And that's not different during an election. So as a nurse, uh, your expertise and knowledge uh, gives you a val very valuable perspective uh, the policymakers, candidates, you know, uh, the governments uh, really need to be made aware of. Um, as everyone knows, nurses are, represent the largest healthcare workforce in Canada, and they're one of the most trusted and respected professionals, in, according to Canadians. So politicians pay attention when we have something to say. And at CNA, we recently did some simple math and found that um, almost one in every 85 people living in Canada is a nurse. So nurses can truly be a force in this election. Uh, next slide, please, Elizabeth. So we'll now talk about how you can get involved more specifically. Uh, just I'll walk through CNA's website and toolkit and we'll talk about ways you can get involved. But uh, just in summary, these are uh, kind of very some uh, high level view of some ways you can get engaged in this election. Uh, so we strongly recommend you go to our website and check out our tools and information, um, make, us, make yourselves, uh, you know, really aware of uh, the tips and uh, information over there. And basically, uh, how you can get involved involves requesting, you, you can request a meeting with a federal candidate, you can send a letter, you can attend events and town halls, and during this election, obviously now we're seeing more virtual events and town halls and engage on social media, and of course, share with your friends and family and colleagues any, uh, you know, the initiative CNA is, is putting forward. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a few moments. Uh, next slide, please. So these are the links to CNA's website, uh, our election uh, page more specifically. Um, very easy to, to uh, remember, I think. Uh, so now what I'll do, I'll share my screen. Uh, so we can go over CNA's election website and toolkit. Uh, let me just share it right now. Okay. Let me just go back to our homepage here so I can show you the how to get to the election page. Um, so this is our homepage and um, you can access our election uh, information here at the top in this banner here. 
So if you click on that, uh, it'll bring you directly to our election web pages. Uh, of course, there's a uh, French version as well. If you want, if you need that, you can just click here on the top right corner for French, and everything's translated here. Um, so basically, uh, we we have a couple of uh, pages here of interest, and uh, the first one is this initial page where we have a link here to the platform document. So you can just click here; it'll open our document, which, by the way, I think looks really neat. Um, and you'll find all sorts of information and background information on each of CNA's pillars, so supporting health workers and virtual care and et cetera, uh, all the things I just talked about. Uh, you can use this in, uh, while you engage uh, with uh, candidates during the federal election. I just muted myself by mistake. <laughs> um, so yeah, so in this first initial page, you'll, you'll find a summary of the recommendations and just some information on and about CNA. Uh, the next page is where we get into a bit more specifics around the election. Uh, this first portion here is just some information on how to vote and a link to Elections Canada website. Uh, again, we really strongly recommend you going there and just checking the dates and the requirements uh, so they can you can go out and vote. Uh, next, we have a link to all the main federal uh, party platforms. So you can click here um, and it'll just bring you straight to um, you, you, the parties we have unveiled uh, uh, election platforms at this time. The Green Party is, is the one that's still left to unveil their full platform document. The Liberals just released theirs yesterday. Uh, so that's all available there. And lastly, here on this page, uh, in every election, CNA sends a survey to all main political parties and uh, asking them questions on, on CNA's election priorities. Um, so we're, we've been posting these answers as we get them. So far, only the Conservative Party has uh, sent uh, their, their answers or responses back to CNA, but I'm expecting we'll get uh, responses from the other parties uh, sometime soon in the next couple of days or the next week. Okay, uh, the next page is here, um, again involved. And this is where you also you can start to see some information on more specifically on how to how to engage. Um, so as I go through these, I'll just uh, you know share a couple of uh, more important tips. Um, so basically, uh, what's first important is uh, to learn about the candidates and the parties, and um, and also know about the issues if you choose to engage during this election, either by sending a letter or requesting a meeting or trying to you know attend events where candidates are are participating and knowing your, your issues, the issues that matter to you that you want to discuss with Canada is, is extremely important. And obviously you can leverage CNA's platform, right? You can uh, use CNA's election priorities as, as your own and, and go talk to candidates. Um, one important thing is to find out who are the, the candidates in your writing. And I'll just try to cover this uh, really quickly. Um, the, I think the best way for you to find out who are your candidates is just to go to Elections Canada website. I'll just click it here so we can go over it real quick. Uh, so this is the homepage for Elections Canada, and they make it very easy to use, at least I think. Uh, in this square here uh, to your left, uh, purple or pink, I don't know, um, you can simply just type in your, a postal code. So I have one here just for a, a general postal code for Ottawa Centre. Um, you just type in your postal code here and uh, it'll give you a list of all the candidates in that writing. So you'll type in your postal code, right? And you just hit go. And it'll open this page showing you uh, your writing name uh, and some information here on uh, voting. And what will be most of interest, at least for this exercise, is this fourth uh, rectangle here. Who are the candidates in my uh, district? So you just click on it and it'll, it'll open a list of all the confirmed uh, candidates in your writing. And you have phone numbers for their offices and a link to their websites. Uh, you'll see th here though, uh, Elections Canada will give you a list of all the parties. So you, you might see one or two parties here that you don't really recognize, maybe like the Animal Protection Party of Canada, uh, but all the main ones uh, should all be uh, here. Uh, so, for example, uh, for the Green Party, you just open their website here. 
and it'll give you the information for the candidate in, in the specific writing that you choose to view. And it's that simple. Um, you can also go through uh, each party's website and we have a link here to the list of candidates for each party. Uh, you can also go do that, uh, but it, I find it's easier to use Elections Canada website. Uh, so now we'll talk about more specifically on engaging with candidates. And uh, there's basically two ways of doing it, uh, sending a letter or requesting a meeting or, attend, or three ways I should say, and attending an, an event. Um, and we'll go over that now. So the third page here, or fourth I should say, uh, of our election website is uh, the toolkit. And this is where you'll find more specific tips and information on how to get involved. So once you've found the candidates for your writing, um, you can you can engage, um, and we've have we have some a couple of tips here uh, before you do, uh, and just to really emphasize, know your stuff, know the issues. Uh, if you have different priorities from CNA, that's uh, totally fine. We do re recommend you know in every every advocacy uh, um, uh, campaign or strategy, uh, the more cohesive and you know unified voice uh, that we can uh, get the nursing voice more unified that that's always uh, stronger right uh, so we have the link to the platform here again um, really recommend staying connected with your local candidates uh, and and following cna on social media as well so find your candidates follow them on social media uh, they'll post about you know what they're doing what they're talking about what are their priorities uh, you can follow the leaders as well for each party to have a more higher level view of uh, the party's positions um, but candidates, local candidates will post about events, uh, you know, town halls, virtual town halls, um, and that you, you can attend. Um, being concise and direct is a very important tip, uh, regardless of the way you're engaging with candidates, either through a meeting or meeting them at an event, um, even more so if it's in, during an event, or even if they're knocking uh, at your door. Uh, candidates are always crunched on time. They'll be very, you know, respectful and attentive to what you're saying, but they only have a couple of minutes, right? Um, so being direct and concise uh, is, is the best way to go. Um, and getting FaceTime uh, is something that we, we, we recommend as well. Uh, and this can either be, like I said, through a meeting or a meeting or just meeting a candidate uh, at an event. Uh, so arm yourself with uh, CNA's platform. And, um, and like I said, work the scene, like be aware of the events uh, that are being organized in, in your writing. Like I said, uh, town halls, webinars, and debates near you, uh, either in person or virtually, depending on uh, how comfortable you feel. Uh, it's always, they're, they're always good opportunities to, um, to engage with candidates. Okay. Um, so now I want to cover sending letters, and this is the easiest way um, you have uh, to engage in this federal election. Uh, it's a very uh, effective way, and be especially because um, you know if, if thousands of nurses are sending letters, uh, you know, asking or urging candidates and political parties for the same issues, uh, they, they'll pay attention, right? And they'll pay attention as well because you're a potential voter, right, in their writing for for the local candidates. So CNA, at CNA, we prepared a very, to e, um, very easy uh, tool you can use, and it's, uh, you can access it through this link here. We're also posting about it constantly on social media. Um, so I'll just open it here and explain it real quick to you, uh, how you can get involved uh, by sending a letter. Uh, so this is a tool we've prepared at CNA. Uh, basically here on, on your left, you just have some general information on TNA's platform and uh, some general guideline, but the thing you most mostly need to um, uh, focus your attention on is this blue space here. And to send a letter uh, to your candidates in your writing, uh, you just put in your name, uh, your email, and your postal code. So I'll just put, I guess you can see my postal code there, but that's fine. Um, you'll just put in a, a postal, your postal code here. And what the tool will do is it'll say which uh, candidates 
uh, the tool can send the letter to. Uh, and you can you know, select uh, which ones you want to send the letter to. So for example, in, in this example, we have the candidates for the Conservative Party, the Liberal Party, uh, the Greens, and, and the NDP. Uh, we recommend sending to all. Uh, but if you prefer it, you can only send it to, say, the, the, the NDP, for example. Uh, that's totally fine, too. Um, and then over at the bottom here, you have the actual letter. It's been pre-drafted. You don't really need to do anything. You just put in your postal code name, information, hit add your voice, and the letter gets sent automatically. You can, however, customize the letter if you wish to. Uh, that's something that, you know, if you're, you're interested and you have the time, is something that we strongly recommend because um, candidates will pay more attention if you, you know, share, um, give local examples or share your personal perspective and experience uh, of why these issues are important to you. Uh, so by providing that local perspective, uh, candidates pay more attention, right? Uh, you, because you're, you are a potential voter, you're a potential uh, constituent, right, if they get elected. And that's basically it. As I said, you just hit add your voice and the letter will get sent away. Uh, we do have a French version, of course. I just wanted to show you it's here at the left and the bottom uh, of the description. You just click uh, en français and it will give you the, the French version. Okay, you, um, we also gave you an option, like if you prefer to write your own letter from scratch, uh, we have another page here, here uh, using this link uh, where there's a, a template uh, for you to write a letter. Uh, say you prefer to do that, that's uh, totally okay too. So here is just some tips and guidance on, on you know, how to write uh, an, a compelling letter. Uh, but obviously, uh, it's easier to use the, the one-click tool. And there's some uh, letter writing tips here as well. And lastly, the, the last point I wanted to cover on how to get engaged is requesting a meeting. Now, um, again, this election, it, it's a bit different because of the pandemic. Uh, there might be less opportunities to be meeting physically, you know, in person with a candidate. But obviously, um, a virtual meetings are, are very much a, a reality these days. So if you're interested and want to get even more engaged, uh, you know, even beyond just sending a letter, you can request a meeting with your local candidates. And uh, the way you would do this is, uh, you remember that first thing we covered on how to find your candidates? Uh, you can do that, access their website or, you know, call their office uh, or get an email from their website and send in a, 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 an email requesting a meeting. Um, and, and just a couple of tips on, on that. We, if, you're, if you are sending a meeting request over email, just be sure to put your request at the top of the email, kind of front load your request. Don't leave it in the middle at, or at the end of your letter. And once sent, you can follow up you know, a couple of days or, or a week later. If you, do, if you get a meeting, uh, if the candidate agrees uh, to meet with you, uh, just be prepared, you know, uh, prepare a script, uh, some talking points, or just use CNA's election platform. Uh, there's a bunch and uh, a lot of information there you can use as talking points uh, to kind of augment uh, the nursing priorities. Um, just take note of how long the meeting will be. Uh, usually the standard is 30 minutes, but it's, a, it's an election time. Candidates are crunched on time, as I said, so it could even be just 15 minutes. So plan accordingly. Uh, during, the, during a meeting, uh, always important to thank the candidate for their time. Um, be respectful and constructive with your you know, comments and attitudes. Even if you're a supporter, say, of party X and you're meeting with party Z, uh, you know, just have a, a very constructive uh, conversation and meeting. Again, very important to use real stories and local examples uh, that kind of elevate the priorities you're talking about. Okay. And after a meeting, it's always good to send a thank you note to the candidate. And um, if you need any help with all of this, uh, like if you're really interested in, 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 in engaging this way, you can send an email to us. Uh, there's an, uh, an email here for our uh, GR uh, department, which is <laughs> yours truly here. And you can send an email, you know, asking any questions and uh, we'll, we will be very happy to help. 
And just uh, very lastly, before we wrap up this portion and we get to questions, because I see we have uh, at least four here. Um, I want to show you the events page. Uh, this is the last one here on our election uh, site. Uh, first, um, the debate broadcast group, uh, you know, it's a consortium of 10 news organizations. They're, they're organizing leaders debates for next week. Uh, there's a French one tomorrow, uh, but then there's these two kind of main ones uh, next week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, at the 8th and 9th, uh, all Eastern time here. Uh, be sure to attend, or, you know, not attend, but uh, watch those um, as uh, those are very interesting discussions. And, um, and obviously we have a CNA webinars here. So uh, we're doing this one here uh, today. And I strongly recommend if uh, you're free and available, uh, we're doing another one, another uh, webinar uh, next week on the 7th at 6 p.m. at CNA's uh, 2021 election panel. And uh, it's quite an exciting one with uh, featuring um, uh, Andre Picard, you may know him, uh, Global Mail journalist, award-winning national health writer, and some other very um, exciting panelists as well. So that covers it. I tried to keep it very, um, you know, detailed in a way, but um, high level as well, so we can get through everything. Um, Elizabeth, we can go back to the slides now. I'll just stop sharing my screen here. Okay, so, so that's what I had here to share with you. Uh, I see there's a lot of uh, at least six questions here, but, um, and we'll go uh, over them right now. Um, for those who haven't put in a question, just type them in the Q&A box and uh, uh, we'll get to them, okay? So the first question is, um, did CNA consider economic inequities, which is interrelated with racism, inner ethnic inequities. We did have a lot of discussion and that was very much part of the uh, issues we, we, we have been uh, discussing uh, for a little while now um, and, and how you know, different economic uh, inequities and uh, impacts uh, determinants of health and, and the health of Canadians. Um, so we at CNA have been trying to um, kind of more and more incorporate these uh, important elements uh, into our policy advocacy and um, lobbying efforts for sure. Okay, I, ho I hope that kind of answers the question. Um, just ask another one if uh, you'd like more information. Um, the next one is around the opioid crisis. Um, uh, the person is saying uh, it's been pretty bad, very true, um, greatly exacerbated by this pandemic for many reasons and largely ignored, but we see it in critical care. Uh, please let us not forget this longstanding uh, crisis. That is uh, definitely uh, uh, an area of, of great concern. We've seen how, um, you know, we can cite examples from BC of how much uh, uh, the opioid crisis has uh, completely exacerbated over there. And, I remember the numbers from last year, it was uh, quite extensively uh, worse compared to you know, non-pandemic times. And um, the, some of the parties, um, if not all, have um, um, elements to address opi the opioid crisis in, in their platforms. I know, because uh, it's fresher in my mind, the liberals yesterday did include um, uh, uh, elements uh, to, uh, on that regard. Um, to address the opioid crisis, and I know the NDP uh, has as well. Okay. And um, another question from uh, Sharon, um, nurse recruitment and retention is cr critical. Uh, does the CNA have a position paper on this? Uh, also violence in nursing seems to be missing in your list of priorities. Um, so nursing shortages and the whole HHR uh, issue has been kind of really top of mind for CNA now. Uh, that's where our um, first pillar of focus is on, uh, the HHR uh, issue. And um, um, I, I do have my colleague Aiden here as well with us, and I'll, I'll ask her to just uh, maybe uh, comment if we 
uh, have a plan for uh, for a position paper on this, uh, but I'll just um, uh, have a comment on uh, the issue of violence in nursing. Um, the challenge with elections is, um, let me just say that the violence in nursing is definitely you know in our radar in terms of our uh, policy and advocacy priorities. Uh, it's something that we we had been working with uh, around very strongly, uh, especially before the pandemic and. Uh, I guess, as everyone uh, can um, uh, uh, understand as well, uh, everyone's agenda was completely derailed with COVID, right? Uh, that was our main priority uh, since last year. But um, uh, it's definitely considered in, in our efforts. And, and what I was saying is the issue with uh, elections is um, the, the priorities we put forward has, has has to be a mix of what is a nursing priority, but what is also appealing to the general public, right? Uh, in a general election, um, uh, the ones who decide where the election goes and the results uh, are Canadians, right? Um, so usually the, the issues have to be very broad and high level enough uh, to make that uh, appealing um, uh, to political parties and to Canadians. Um, Aiden, do you, sorry to kind of put you on the spot here, but do we have any plans for a position paper on uh, nurse recruitment and, and retention? Hi, Lucas, and uh, thank you so much for the uh, the question, Sharon. Um, in terms of developing a position paper, there, we're certainly looking at different strategies in which to address nursing retention and recruitment. Um, and so a position paper is certainly we're not ruling that out uh, whatsoever. Um, but again, part of the election platform is around health and human resources. And one of the reasons why you know it relates so strongly to the nurse recruitment and retention strategies, because we need to know who we need, where we need them and when. And that's a big part of what's missing right now in uh, the nursing workforce is understanding how many nurses do we actually need? How, much, how many nurses are gonna make a difference and how can we ensure that uh, these environments are, are safe and supportive of the nurses that are there? So uh, it's certainly something that we're, we're moving forward in and trying to attack at a high level, um, but uh, definitely something that you'll see uh, coming from us uh, in the near future. Thank you so much, Aiden. Uh, the next question uh, from Sherry, uh, has CNA considered developing a process of enabling CNA members to connect with each other in local writings uh, to enable nurses to gather, analyze issues together and to advocate with their MPs together to support um, um, place or a local based uh, organizing and advocacy? That's a really good question, Sherry. And um, we're, that's something we're definitely constantly thinking about. And uh, we're right now we're developing or migrating our website into a new platform. And that pl platform uh, will have this structure we're currently creating um, called communities of practice. Um, and we're still in the very initial phases of developing uh, them, but uh, there will be one for advocacy uh, specifically. Um, so I think your comment is very pertinent and very timely, and uh, we'll, we'll be definitely looking at ways we can, um, you know, have a better um, um, organizing advocacy in, in that regard. Uh, we, we at CNA uh, organize uh, uh, every year virtual, um, this because of the pandemic, it's all now virtual, but uh, in the beginning of the year, we organized a virtual lobby week. We met with uh, over 55 members of parliament in, in one week. And to your point, it would, would have been extremely helpful to be able to pinpoint which nurses uh, live in, in the candidates or, or the MPs is uh, writing. So, so that's something we're, we're definitely considering. Thank you uh, for the question. Okay, uh, next question uh, from Vin Minders. Um, on the elections.ca, uh, so Elections Canada website, they have just the phone number and website of candidates, but so much happens on social media. Why does Elections Canada uh, not list candidate social media accounts as well? That's a really good question for Elections Canada. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of kidding, but I think the way they structure it is just to have the phone number and um, um, uh, the website. And you'll notice that not every candidate has, I think all of them have a, a phone number, but not all of them have a website because some candidates don't have a website. Um, but uh, for the most part, uh, I'd say it, it, it would still be pretty easy to just go to their, the candidate website and find their social media 
um, uh, accounts and links uh, through their website. It's an extra step, but uh, I don't think uh, um, Elections Canada will do that, uh, that uh, at least in this election. And a question from Judy, which I know, so nice to see you, Judy, here. Um, outside of reviewing the individual platforms and weeding through their sites to determine policy position, is there a summary of where each party situates on nursing issues and healthcare priorities? Thank you for the question, Judy. Uh, very timely as well, because uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, the Liberal Party just released their uh, platform. So what we did yesterday, right after the release, was uh, finalize a document we've been working on um, where CNA um, um, analyzes all of the party platforms. Uh, so that should be coming out either today or tomorrow. The English version and the French uh, should be coming out uh, early next week. Um, and as I did mention uh, when I went through the website, uh, CNA also sends an election uh, questionnaire to all parties and on our four pillars, right? So, um, health workers, virtual care, uh, aging, and uh, anti-racism. And each party kind of responds uh, how they would address these four um, priorities. And as I mentioned, so far only the conservatives have answered. You can check their response uh, on our website. Um, but as I said, we, we are expecting um, to get the responses from, from the other parties soon. So thank you for, for the question. Um, next question from Falina. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, what have we uh, kept in consideration for addressing the problems of discrimination regarding senior nurses and how they make it extremely difficult to sustain yourself as a new, as a new novice is by virtue of dominant races and violence bullying that prevail in the profession in at least most hospitals of Toronto? Uh, that's a very good question and something uh, um, that we definitely uh, discussed uh, when we were elaborating the platform. And um, a key issue that um, we're saying to political parties um, is that you know, our election ask around increasing recruitment of, of, of black and people of color and, and indigenous people into the health workforce. It's not just not um, recruiting, recruiting them, but also supporting them in their careers, right? Um, uh, supporting both um, entry level uh, people as well as more senior people. Uh, Aiden, not to kind of put you on the spot there again, but would you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a big part of our, our platform and it's something that we've heard from uh, nurses Black last uh, last summer, uh, and also in many of our consultations, is that we not only do we need to see better representation of uh, of who Canada is, Black, Indigenous, people of color as nurses and in just a healthcare workforce in general. Um, but we also need to make sure that those environments are safe for the nurses who are entering to, and entering the workforce and that they feel welcome, that they're welcome and, and inclusive. So um, I think you're bringing up a good point that it's not just about increasing the numbers, but also about ensuring that those environments um, are, are healthy and, and safe spaces uh, for, all, for all people of color. Thanks, Aiden. Okay, uh, another question from Veninder. Uh, in response to Farina, uh, no one is happy with the Canadian frontline nurses uh, who have been doing anti-vax protests, right? And what is CNA doing to address nurses who participate in this information? Uh, we've been um, um, strongly advocating, uh, or our position really, um, it's to lead by example, right? And, and you mentioned there, Evan, in there, um, our statements on mandatory vaccines. Um, that's, um, you, you know, for the most part, um, how we're really trying to address, uh, not only in nursing, right? Because it's not a, a nursing thing, right? A lot of other um, uh, people um, uh, have that position on anti-vaccines and anti-lockdowns. Um, so our position is really to, uh, lead by example and putting out strong statements like the one we did on mandatory vaccines and um, and in conjunction with other health organizations. So the statement we put out was with the medical association um, and uh, we saw how much um, uh, media attention it, it got. It still has, um, I, I still see news stories mentioning and refer referencing um, the statement we put, we put out with uh, the medical association.
And I see another question from Farina. I think uh, um, I, I do believe that kind of the, the previous question we answered uh, addresses this uh, a portion uh, of your question as well. And I, I will just add here, uh, Lucas, just to address Farina's question that, you know, CNA is moving forward with other issues, uh, not just the election platform related to uh, fighting racism and discrimination, but we are ho hosting a summit, which uh, you'll be hearing about shortly uh, in November related to racism in nursing and healthcare specifically, uh, as well as declarations and other work uh, that we're moving forward with as well to continue to address um, racism and discrimination in, um, in healthcare, both uh, for nurses and healthcare workers, but also for the population as well. Thank you, Aiden. And I see a question from Sean. Hey, Sean. Um, um, oops, sorry, I almost lost the question here. Um, so Sean is saying that uh, physician fee for service is a heated topic, uh, which it really is, but the timing seems ideal to address this uh, in support of virtual care and innovative care approaches. Uh, what are CNA's thoughts on advocating for alternative physician-based strategies and election issue? Um, I would say we certainly won't um, um, uh, include, you know, this issue as an election issue, uh, especially because um, even though it relates to nursing, um, that's most mostly, you know, a Canadian Medical Association um, um, kind of issue to deal with. And um, CNA does, as I mentioned, um, work very, very closely with uh, the Medical Association. And our, our CEO, Michael Villeneuve, he was or still is a part of one of their uh, expert uh, committees uh, that um, helps uh, to inform their work. And, um, and I know that CMA has been having discussions or, or you, know, you know, generally just debates around this issue. So uh, the nursing perspective definitely um, has been brought to their awareness for sure. Uh, is there anything you would add there, Aiden? No, I would just, uh, I would agree with the, everything you mentioned there. Perfect, thank you. Um, I see Judy with another comment, but I think she's just responding to Farina. And I see Veninder as well with just uh, another comment in response to another question as well. Um, I don't see any other questions here in the chat box as well. Um, and I see what we're almost at 1 p.m. anyways. Um, are there any other questions, um, any issues you would like me to talk a little bit more about or um, further explain a little bit more any ways you think you, you can engage or um, if there aren't any, uh, if you can't think of any questions right now, um, Elizabeth, if we go to the, uh, slide with my email. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's my uh, direct email. Uh, if you have any questions about any or all of this, uh, please feel, feel free to email me. I'm uh, happy to help out in any way I can. Okay, so um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, since Elizabeth just put up the, the, the slide on next week's event, just make sure to register if you're not. As I said, it's going to be a very, uh, very exciting panel. We're very excited, uh, so we really hope to see you there. And um, and thank you for uh, being here today, for participating, uh, asking questions. Uh, we really appreciate it. Well, like I said, I think that for us, one of the most effective ways of being able to get nursing issues, um, uh, you know, in, in the minds of politicians, candidates, and decision makers, uh, is through nurses. Is through that grassroots and direct engagement with nurses in the political making uh, decision making process. So extremely important to participate. Please share all these initiatives with your friends, colleagues, uh, you know, anyone you can think of. Um, and yeah, we hope to see you next week again uh, at our next event. Thank you so much.